Okay, we're going to look at cleaning a pump, but before we do anything with this, you want to make sure it's unplugged. The only thing you're going to need is an Allen key and a little bit of finger strength. If this is what your pump looks like and things have been spraying out the air pipe, or if you see liquid uh, coming out of it at any point, immediately turn it off because it's at risk of damage. If you see liquid in this pipe, if you see liquid condensing inside it, that's a really bad sign. It means you should put a trap before your pump. The first thing we're going to do is take out that connector. That connects it two heads of the vacuum pump. It takes a little bit of finger strength. If you really can't do it, you can use a spanner, but other than that, you're not going to need to. Um, once you've got it all wound out, you can literally just pop it out. It bends and it'll come out. Try not to kink it. And then we're going to turn the pump up. Often there'll be liquid inside there. If that liquid is a volatile solvent, you want to do this in somewhere well ventilated or with a bit of solvent and you can see I've got to mop up some things off the bench there that have come out of the inside of the pump which is a sign that things have been condensing inside so just make sure rotate it around with a bit of tissue and you can take out all of the liquid so no more spills onto the bench again usually a volatile solvent so you want to do this in well ventilated uh, place maybe in a fume hood anyway take your allen key and what you want to do is start loosening the bolts but you want to start with opposite bolts so Start on each of the four corners and do the opposite ones first and loosen them by maybe half a turn at first uh, and then you can start loosening them more. If you loosen one entirely at the beginning what will happen is it will open, it will wedge on the far side and you won't be able to get them out. Once you have them one or two turns open you can just take each screw out. So once you have that done, take a little bit of elbow grease, lift this off and you want to lift it straight up because there are things that pins that line it. Uh, keep it lined up and once you do that if you turn it over you can see here I've let a screw drop out probably want to avoid that so this is what it's going to look like on the inside and you can see there's three or four small pieces that you want to be sure not to lose you can see the pump is full of things that should not be in there you can see it's soaking in liquid and there's also brown gunk in there so this is a bad sign this pump needs a clean Wiping off the diaphragm there, that's the diaphragm that pushes the air through the pump. So it's really good to keep that clean because if that gets worn out, you're going to have to replace it and they aren't cheap. Anyway, once you've done that, you can also see the other half of the uh, head for that bit of the vacuum and you want to clean that up. Basically, you want to clean everything off with some acetone. You want to be a little bit careful not to lose any of the small parts. There's two O-rings and there are two valves. And basically what you're going to do is clean them again with a bit of acetone. Be careful not to bend the valves out of shape um, and then put them back. Make sure to put them back the side up that you found them and in the place that you found them. The way that they're actually turned inside the circle isn't so important, but it's good to have the right side up uh, so you get consistent wear and they don't start to bend. And it's good to have them in the same ones because again, for the same reasons. Um, the material that these are made of varies from pump to pump, so sometimes you'll find them of rubber, but the newer ones you have this uh, harder plastic, which obviously is more hard wearing. Anyway, you clean those, and once you have them clean, and you've cleaned all the other parts out, then it's just a matter of reassembling the pump exactly the way you found it. So, a little bit of elbow grease, clean it off. If you have some cotton buds or something like that, it's almost uh, more useful for clearing out the various different holes. Again, shove some acetone through the different parts and you're good to go. So once you have it clean, reassemble it. And we're going to do that by taking the uh, vacuum head and putting it back onto the diaphragm and make sure everything's lined up and have another look and just check everything's clean. If it's not, this is kind of your last chance to clean it before you put it back together. I'm going to put the O-rings back into place first and then the O-rings are going to guide where the valves go. So you can see I'm just giving it one more thorough clean making sure that there's no bits of dirt because any bits of dirt can form a just a gap between the seal and the plastic and let air flow through and reduce the overall vacuum potential of your pump or overall vacuum that you can achieve. So in goes the valve and the o-ring just guides it into place and then in with the other valve and the other o-ring. So often it's easier to put the o-ring in first and then drop the valve in on top. Uh, as you can see a little bit fiddly but uh, not too tricky. And just make sure, again, that you have the side facing up that was facing up when you disassemble it. And it doesn't really matter what direction it's facing. So you can see I'm assembling it here, uh, if you want another look at how it's done. And you can see that there's a guide pin. So there's a recess in that pump head, and there's a guide pin on the outer casing. 
and you have to line those up before you put it together. So you can assemble it uh, either on the side of the pump or you can pre-assemble it, put it on. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, but here you see I've got it put on and I just turn it a little bit and make sure that the arrow pointing up is pointing towards the top of the pump when you put that on. And if that is the case, the guide pin will fit in and it will all fit together neatly. And then all you need to do is throw in the four screws. And similar to when you were taking it off, it's a good idea to tighten each of them sparingly at first and then slowly make them a little bit tighter. And they don't need to be excessively tight. Uh, you're just going to start crushing things if you tighten excessively. So again, you can see I'm just going to repeat this on the other side, except we're going to speed it up uh, because it's exactly the same process. The opposite side is exactly the same. So just disassemble it, take it apart. Uh, you'll see that this side is a little bit less dirty. So typically the side that is um, on the intake side gets an awful lot more uh, abuse than the side that is across the other side of the pump. Uh, so disassemble it and clean all the parts and then put it back together exactly the same as the other side. Um, the one other thing that you can have a look at here, so you'll see in a few seconds, is the view in when those two valves are assembled correctly. So just make sure they line up nicely. You can see I've assembled the head off the pump this side so we can actually have a look in at it. And when you look in you can see that the valve completely covers the single circle and the other valve is lined up, it doesn't completely cover those two small holes. And if you look at that in operation, if you have a look at it, you can see why that's the case. Okay, so just finish assembling it, tighten it. You can see I go to opposite corners repeatedly, getting there closer and closer. And then just put back in the um, connecting pipe that connects the two sides. Uh, you can check the vacuum of each side if you want to check that they're both operating. They'll operate independently as separate vacuum pumps. Um, check the total vacuum. You can use a barometer for that just to make sure and then just clean the pump off. All right, hope that helps. If you have any questions, post them below. That's all for now. Bye.